C.S. Lewis said, you're never too old to set another goal or to dream another dream. In the early 1850s, the founders of Trinity Klein left their homeland in Germany and immigrated to Texas. They came from nearly every province of Germany seeking economic, political, and religious freedom. Originally named Big Cypress, they settled in the area we now know today as Klein. They bought land at a dollar an acre and created an agricultural community. They were faithful to attending church, but it was not easy. Salem Lutheran was their nearest place of worship, and it required a 10 to 15 mile journey by ox-drawn wagon. Due to the great distance and harsh trip to get there, in 1874, it was decided to establish Trinity Klein Lutheran Church. One of those early immigrants was my great-great-grandfather, Adam Klein. He and his wife and other German immigrants settled in Northwest Harris County looking for religious freedom, for farmland, and for the opportunities that America afforded that Germany no longer afforded. At 150 years old, our church, Trinity Klein Lutheran, is not the oldest church in the area. But before our church was founded, uh, the, the uh, residents of the Klein community went to Salem Lutheran on the other side of Tomball. And the family story always went that, uh, you know, it was a, an all day kind of trip to go to Salem from Klein. And, and uh, on one of the trips, uh, a child was killed somehow. And uh, that was the inspiration uh, for the community to start its own church. They trusted God in everything they did. In their journeys from Europe to our community uh, and, and in everything they did once they got here. The congregation purchased 160 acres of land on which there was a one-room building. Now, this building served as both a house of worship and Christian day school until they built our first sanctuary in 1882. Most people know me by my nickname, Butchie or Butch. Most of my school friends call me Butchie. And uh, I've lived in Klein all my life. Born in uh, November 19th, 1928, and coming the 19th of November, I'll be 95 years old. My daddy and my mother and my brother, sisters were all members here. My family had so much to do with uh, Trinity. My great-grandfather was a charter member here, and my grandfather had so much to do with uh, building the church. My brother, he was a, a elder here in the church for a number of years, and uh, I think my daddy was an elder too, but I know he was a, a deacon for a number of years. I had two sisters that attended school here too. All of my family has been here at Trinity, and uh, I hold it dear to my heart. In 150 years, our congregation has grown from those eight charter members and their families to over 3,000 members. As a result of growth, the sanctuary has been rebuilt four times, with today's church standing a quarter mile from the original church's location. Our bell was purchased and installed in 1882 and has been moved to each new sanctuary, continuing to call us to worship. Trinity Lutheran Church was not only a church to the members at Trinity, but it was also the center of their life. That's where they socialized, that's where their children were baptized, they were confirmed, they were married. They often met their spouses at Trinity, and their children attended school here. The families that lived in this community would go over to Salem and Rose Hill, which was like a three-hour trip one way, no bridges, trying to get through the gullies. It was a difficult journey. That worship, that gathering together was so important to them that they made that trip on Saturday, camped out on the church grounds of Salem Saturday night, then had worship with the people of God, and then came back home. So it was a major commitment for them. They needed it, and they knew they needed it. So we fast forward now to this time. We need the Lord too, and the Lord needs us in His mission. He has commissioned us to be His disciples, followers of the Christ, sharing the good news of Jesus in our community. 
Trinity's first families prioritized teaching the Word of God and providing a strong foundation in Jesus Christ for their children and future generations. So they decided a school would be very beneficial to our church and community. There were small public schools in the area at the time, but Klein ISD would not be organized until the 1930s. Our parochial school was founded at the same time as our church in 1874. What began as lessons taught by Trinity's first pastor in a one-room schoolhouse has grown to a student body of over 600 students shepherded by nearly 100 staff members. Hi, I'm Elaine Barbie, and I began teaching first and second grade combined classroom in 1985. And I'm Richard Barbie. I came to Trinity in 1968, and I had third and fourth graders in my first classroom, and I taught here at Trinity until 1987. What remains the same at Trinity is that Trinity is Christ-centered, and that we do what St. Paul tells the Colossians to do. Whatever we do in word and deed, we do to the glory of God. We're bringing students in that need the love of Jesus, that, that get that on a daily basis here. And those students are able to come and pray with their, their classmates, pray with their teachers, worship together uh, with their peers on Wednesday mornings, and it's changing their lives in a real important way. Trinity Klein has several ministries that serve the greater North Houston community. Restoring Hope Food Pantry began as emergency services after Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Now, this ministry now serves over 50,000 people annually, and we are opening a building on campus dedicated solely to the Restoring Hope ministry. There's a continuous rhythm of service on our campus with numerous weekly ministries taking place. You may see the choir rehearsing, a quilting group who donates what they make, or volunteers teaching English as a second language. There are over 30 unique ministries taking place on our campus weekly. Beyond our campus, there has consistently been global mission opportunities for our congregation and community to participate in, such as facilitating Vacation Bible School in Alaska and Vision Clinics in Kenya. With over a decade of involvement in Kenya, a unique opportunity arose to help the future of young Kenyan girls. The Kenya School of Hope is a residential and educational haven for those girls. Hello, I am <laughs> Ray Tackard and my wife Flora. We have been members here at Trinity for about 25 years. And through the Trinity Blaze in Kenya short-term mission trips, we have been able to give over 160,000 Kenyans spiritual and physical sight. From the uh, uh, vision clinics, uh, we have had... Uh, we had two Maasai chiefs, the tribe that we have been working with in Kenya at the request of the Lutheran Church in Kenya, asked us if we would consider building a rescue center and school for girls fleeing FGM and early marriage. They had so many running away that they were having problems. They didn't know what, where to put them. There are now over 70 girls there. Of those 70 girls, there have been 45 girls who have chosen to attend uh, a baptismal and confirmation class conducted by Lutheran deacon Joseph Nakuku, who has been most successful in reaching out to them and to the, the area of, around the school. And what is your hope for the next 150 years for the missions team? Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep on, keep on, because the Lord will bless whatever you're doing in his name and uh, share the love of Jesus. Trinity Klein Lutheran Church and School has a rich history directly tied to serving the people of the surrounding community since 1874. From our origin as the social and spiritual center of Klein, after 150 years, Trinity remains dedicated to serving the community.
The poet tells us that two roads diverged in a yellow wood, but in order to get to that fork in the road, we need to understand exactly the history behind that. So it is with us here at Trinity Klein. 1901, and services for the first time were offered in English. The people here said, if you can't teach them German, at least teach them Jesus. 1974, our 100th anniversary. 1985, the Angel Church was dedicated. Today, we call it the pier. It hosts all of our youth ministry. 1996, contemporary worship was added to the mix here at Trinity. 2008, our present sanctuary was dedicated. Since that time, we've also established the Kenyan School of Hope, Restoring Hope, Alaskan Mission, Live Streaming, Family Life Center, and the Middle School. Today, built on this foundation and this heritage of some 150 years, we have 1,050 households, some 600 students in our school system, a $10 million budget for mission and ministry, and a healthy staff. A bright future for Trinity Lutheran Church in the years ahead because we are rooted in Christ and connecting generations to the love of Jesus for some 150 years. It feels so interesting for me to consider the present in this 150 years, because in a lot of ways, we can look back and appreciate everywhere that we've been, and it gets us excited for what's next. But it's really fun to just stop and see what's happening right now, to see people reconnecting in community, uh, some connecting for the very first time, uh, whether it be through all of our various ministries or through our school. I think about our kids' ministries, our, our student ministries, the joy those bring me to see faith growing seeds planted, uh, but then maturing the older that they get. And the same thing is true when it seems like someone's hearing the word for the very first time. So yeah, it's incredible to think that God has brought us through 150 years to bring us into this present moment with exactly who he wants here, the gifts, the skills, uh, the community, uh, both of our staff, but our whole congregation and the people that are coming through our doors uh, to go about his work right now to bring things like peace and love and joy. And it just gets me excited, yes, for the here and now, but also to start imagining what the next 150 years of our history could be. In 2019, we started our first Spanish Bible class. And we started with two families. And these two families, they brought more. And we saw how God was doing amazing things in our lives and their lives. It's been almost five years, and we continue how God is working and building a vibrant Hispanic ministry here at Trinity. As pastor, my hope is to that we fulfill the call to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ with our community and with every other nation that God brings to our doors. When I think about the future of Trinity Klein, I truly see uh, the school continuing, just bust at the seams so much that uh, we, we're gonna add on new facilities. I have no doubt we're gonna have to expand our school facilities uh, because of all the things that the school is doing and producing. You know, 150 years ago, and even we, we might say 75 years ago, Trinity Klein Lutheran Church and School was the center of the Klein community and probably the place that had the most influence in this uh, community. And I see that becoming real again. Uh, and I think in the future, that's gonna become a, a even more real, that we are gonna begin to have such an impact on the Klein community that people are gonna be looking to us for influence and for answers, that leaders within the community are gonna be looking at Trinity Klein Lutheran Church and School as the place where influence and the shaping of culture happens in our community and impacts the community. It's exciting to know what God has done in this place for 150 years, but but so exciting to see what he's got planned for us and the goals that we will continue to set, the dreams that we will will dream and, and, and allow God to lead us into a real bright future. And I, I hope I get to see so much of it as well and be a part of it.